Hey guys, today I'm showing you how I created this Nike logo animation in After Effects. So here we are inside After Effects, and the first thing you'll notice is that I have my logo imported here with five different layers. When animating logos, it's always a good idea. Have as much as possible be on its own layer, that way we have a lot more to work with when it comes to movement and motion. The first thing I'm going to do here is to create a null layer and parent all the layers to that null so that we can control all the layers as one. We will be focusing on animating each individual letter by using a stroke reveal technique, but first I will just quickly add a shape layer for our background and change it to white there. That looks much better. First, select the pen tool. Now we are going to draw over our letter, but make sure that you are drawing a new shape layer. Don't worry too much about the match, the size and shape exactly. We just want a fairly close shape that we can refine if we need to. I'll just move these points a little and ensure that the stroke width completely covers our layer. Whoops, that shouldn't be in here. Delete. I'll just quickly rename this new shape layer to something like N Track Mat 1, as we're going to be having two of these for each letter. Now just track mat this layer to the N shape. Then we're going to add a trim paths to this layer, which is what will give us this stroke reveal style of animation. We'll set the end to 0% and add a keyframe, then move along about 20 frames, maybe even 25 frames. Add another keyframe and bring the end value up to 100%. It looks as though there are some overlapping areas, so I will quickly reposition the points of my shape layer so we get a more clean reveal. To make this look more dynamic, we want to alter the keyframe velocity. To do this, I like to use Keyframe Wingman, which is free to download and an excellent addition to any workflow. I'll set both the in and out of both of these keyframes to something around 83%. Now we'll duplicate that shape layer by pressing Ctrl D, then change the stroke color to match that of our logo. Let's pull this layer back a few frames to offset the animation. This way we'll get one stroke coming in before the other. We'll just pull both sets of end keyframes over a little to slightly slow down the animation. Now I will select both shape layers and parent them to our original N letter. This is so that we can add some movement while keeping our animation intact. I will set a position keyframe on the N letter for where we want the final position to be, then add another keyframe in which we will pull the position up so that we get this slide down animation. Again, we want to alter the velocity of these position keyframes. I like staying somewhere in the low 80s for this kind of animation. In this case, I'm going to change the first keyframe so that we get a bit more of a rapid decline in the beginning of the animation. Right, now that we're done with the first letter, all we need to do is repeat that process for the rest of the text, following the same steps. Some letters like an I are much easier as it's just a single line and there's no overlap to worry about, but others such as the K are a little trickier. And in fact, as you can see here, I decided to draw two different strokes over the K to have the animation come in from different parts of the letter. It's important to remember in a case like this that pull down the trim path under both strokes which are being kept in the same layer here as we want this trim paths to control them both simultaneously. Similarly with the E letter we'll have two strokes as well but these will be animated one of the, the other so we want the main body of the letter to come in first then the middle line. We'll then add the same slide down animation for each of these offsetting them slightly so that we get a smooth one after the other style of animation. I'm also pre-comping each letter and it's stroke reveal to help simplify our timeline a little, but importantly so that we have control over the whole animation. Again, we just repeat the process for the swoosh to give it the same style of reveal. I'm parenting all the pre-comps to the control null that created earlier, and we'll add a gradual scale down over the course of the entire animation. To add a little more pizzazz to this, we're going to add some quick flashes. We'll add in a new solid layer, then apply a fill effect and use the dropper to select the same greenish color of our logo. We're essentially going to be creating an inverse effect by also adding a fill effect to the pre-composed logo animation. Add some keyframes on both the background and pre-comp fills and switch the color every three or four frames. To add another layer of dimension, I'm going to change this second flashing layer to a bright orange, then use the Reptile tool to repeat the logo across the whole canvas. I'll also add a motion tile effect in order to create some subtle movement before we return to our original color. I'm using Control alt d in order to cut the pre-comp into a new layer here and applying the effects to that new layer so we can easily return to the original state. And there you have it, a pretty cool Nike logo animation. Remember to subscribe for more and hit the like button. As always, the project file can be found in the description below.